Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another interesting beer review. Thanks for watching. And another Landbier from uh, Thuringen or Thuringia as the English name is on the state in the middle of Germany. But uh, I prefer to say Thuringen because I think it sounds a little bit better. Uh, so this is from the um, Wetzdorfer. Uh, Traditions und Spezialitäten Brauerei and it's their um, Landbier which uh, is not a really a defined beer style as I've been mentioning before on the channel while I've been re reviewing a Landbeers it's more um, the name of the beer that um, the specific brewery started, started with uh, basically so it can vary a lot um, from brewery to brewery. Um, but um, I'm going to give you some, uh, some information about this brewery, of course. Quite a lot of information in this case, since I found a lot on their website. This is how it looks like, in a way, quite good looking one. And you see it also has the, the, um, the same bottle type as the uh, Löschsvärg that I did review before on the channel and the same um, special opening uh, process also in this one who is going to be um, turned up to open it up and um, yeah it's the uh, kind of um, Astra or type shaped small bottle Astra from Hamburg who is uh, quite a big brand uh, known for this a uh, little bit cuter, smaller bottles. Um, as you know, I prefer the big 0 0.5 uh, 5 liter bottles, of course. Anyway, um, this uh, brewery, uh, some information about it. In uh, 1489, the Siedehof became the property of Heinrich Heise, the official, and in 1503 it passed to the Counts of Schwarzburg, Rudolstadt, who managed it as a preliminary work. The municipality of Watzdorf has also brewed for its own use since the conversion of the estate to the sovereign outwork in the 16th century and later maintained on its own inn. In, 17, in 1807, this brew house with the brewing rights became into private ownership. Incidentally, the first landlord is said to have been called the Turk because it is said uh, to have led him to Constantinople as a traveling journeyman. The pleasant taste of the Watzdorf beer attracted many guests. Regional travel literature from the 19th century also praised the much visited inn, which Incidentally, it was associated with an excellent beer cellar business on the nearby Seichsteinrock Ottenbühl. Uh, at that time, it was a summer inn uh, in the midst of well tented green areas and flower beds located in the Erfurter Stollen, a former ore mine in this area. In the 1880s, Miss Pauline Rösler was the owner of the brewery and restaurant in Watzdorf and the destination Ottenbühl. Small private breweries were very common at that time. In 1881 there were 23 breweries in the district court uh, of Rudolstadt, to which Watzdorf belonged, which were spread over 17 of the uh, 40 towns. Thuringia, however, had 900 breweries. Most of beers brewed there, however, were not very durable and therefore hardly suitable for nationwide sales. Even before the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, the export beer breweries with their beers that were already more uh, industrial and more heavily brewed in the Bavarian style became increasingly important. Such a brewery, already equipped with a steam boiler system, was founded by Ernst Otto Funke, in 1893 and later operated under the company name Wattstoffel Export Brewery Funke und Heinrich. Until 1913 the brewery was owned by E. O. Funke and O. H. Heiden. 
On August 19, 1913, the Saale Consumer Association in Rudolstadt, with the help of other financiers, formed the production company Thuringia GmbH Rudolstadt to acquire and expand the Watzdorf Brewery. The initiator of this foundation was the Schwarzburg Rudolstadt member of the state parliament Emil Hartmann, who was also appointed the first managing director. The capital was uh, 30,000 marks, of which the Consumer Association held the lion's share of 25,000 marks. In a short space of time, the brewery, which is closely linked to the consumer movement, was significantly expanded. Systems for the production of non-alcoholic beverages and other brewery products were added. The company had made good progress despite inf inflation and the economic crisis precisely because of its level of technical equipment. Output rose from 4,834 hectoliters in the 1923-24 financial year to an impressive uh, 24,751 hectoliters in the 1930-1931 financial year. Uh, political developments in the 1933 forced the now called Brauerei Watzdorf GmbH based on the Consumer Association Gera and Weimar and the Bamberg Malthaus to go their own way. The further work of the company, like that of the whole consumer movement, was more and more difficult because it was not politically wanted. Between 1933 and 1935, the authorities even appointed a trustee to heed the company. Uh, on June 23, 1942, the basis of the instructions for adopting the consumer cooperative facilities to war economic conditions, the community work of the German Labour Front GmbH was briefed on the brewery's assets and practically liquidated. The foundation, uh, the founding of the consumer cooperative in the Rudolstadt district in the late 1945 created the conditions for the new beginning of the Konnensatz Brewery Watzdorf. The company grew steadily and benefit, benefited because of its special position as a consumer cooperative. From 1951 to 1970, the annual production rose to over 100,000 hectoliters. The containers and the proportion of the range are particularly noteworthy. Of the 85,000 hectoliters of beer produced in the 1970, 40,000 hectoliters was only delivered as a draft beer. In addition, there was almost 16,000 hectoliters of non-alcoholic drinks. For comparison, the percentage of draft beer in German breweries will only be between 10% and 25% of the total output in 2010. Until the political upheaval in 1989, the Watzdorf operation was by far the largest brewery in the district. It had 149 employees and, including the lemonade bottling, achieved an annual output of 185,000 hectoliters. Between 1991 and 1994, two privatizations followed with the participation of the Upper Palatinate Brewing family, which were not successful due, which were not successful due to the lack of marketable concepts and wrong strategies. The short successive bankruptcies also largely led to the widespread market this placement of the Watzdorfer beers. With a lot of courage, commitment and preservance, um, preservance the uh, remaining staff made a fundamental restart between the 1997 and 1998. On September 3rd, 1998, the time had come. The state of the art brewery reconstructed according to the available means started the production again, now in Thuringian hands and without outside interests. Uh, and some more information. With brewing rights since 1411, we would like to introduce ourselves to you as one of the oldest breweries in Germany. We have a lot to tell, because we combine the old traditional brewing art with the latest technology. We are happy to show you our brew house with its copper kettles, our imposing bubbling plant and our small, lovely furnished museum. You can smell hops with us and nibble a malt grain if you want. In order to get a real impression of our latest development, the brewery tour includes a short film with impressive shots, not to forget the beer. 
Every guest can choose between a delicately hoppy Bourdie Pils or a roasted malt aromatic Schwarzbier and then enjoy it freshly tapped in the rustic atmosphere of our scarf. What is a shawl? Well, we'll tell you that when you visit us. Are you curious? That was about uh, visiting the brewery, which looks really nice uh, according to their website. Of course, I'll link to the um, brewery's website in the description box below as always, so feel free to check out that as well. Um, brewers as a profession. A profession with tradition and future. The brewing industry is one of the most important branches of the German food industry. It is particularly true of central Germany. The Thuringian brewery companies are employees uh, are employers for well over 2,000 employees. The majority of the required qualifications are based on skilled worker training. In addition to other professional fields, the qualification as a brewer and maltster is of, of of course, an industry-specific qualification. One job, many facets. The beer is only as good as the people who make it. Technology is a top priority in the brewery, and the profession of brewer and maltster requires very well-trained specialists. You can control and monitor uh, the entire brewing process, from the pur purchasing the raw materials to bottling the beer. The evaluation of barley, wheat and hops is just as much as a part of this as the preparation of malt, the use of auxiliary materials um, and the maintenance and operation of brewing and filling system. The brewer no longer stirs in the mash in uh, the kettle by hand but controls all the production processes with the help of state-of-the-art computer technology. Knowledge of microbiology and botany, biochemistry and analytics is essential to ensure the quality of beer as a food. Brewers and maltsters also experts, uh, are also experts in the areas of energy supply, environmental protection and hygiene. And so that the beer um, not only tastes good but the production also pays off. You need business know-how. So it won't get boring. After successfully completing their training, the brewers monsters are not only the ones who have opportunity to work in Saxony. In Germany and around the world, high qual highly qualified brewers and monsters are sought after experts in the beer industry. The way to success. What are the requirements? Anyway, anyone interested in training as a brewer and monster needs a qualified school leaving certificate secondary school, junior high school or high school, understanding of tec technical relationship is just as important as a quick observation skills, ability to concentrate and quick reactions. The brewer's profession also includes flexibility, independent thinking, independent action and the ability to work in team. By the way, brewing is still craft. There has to be a lot of work. Theory and practice. The training runs according to the dual system. In the breweries and malting plants, in the brewer's vocational school, in uh, a brewery and malting business, practical skills are primarily taught. The trainees go through all departments of the brewery on a schedule. The, there they learn, for example, how to check the quality of raw, auxiliary and op uh, operating materials, how to control the mashing process, depending on the type of beer and quality of the malt, by regulating time, temperature and quantity, how to check the clarity and concentration of the vault, how to carry out water analysis and how to ferment it to control filtration process, analyze the beer, keep the systems ready for operation and check the safety. The job of the vocational school is theoretically underpin technical knowledge and convey connections between the individual production processes. The trainees not only learn how to do something but also why. The training period is generally three years. After the second year, an intermediate exam is taken. The training period can all be shortened by a half a year for middle school and one year for high school. The skilled worker exams are taken in front of the Chamber of Crafts or the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. This depends on which chamber the training company is affiliated with. What is earned? The training allowance, allowance is based on the Applicable collective agreements of uh, concluded training contracts. At present, the apprenticeship uh, remu 
narration in companies subject to collective bargaining agreements in, is around 500 euros in the first year of training and develops up to around 800 euros in the third year of training depending on the specific job and past and after passing the skilled worker examination the brewers monsters can expect above average starting salaries and an uh, interesting perspective Dresden the vocational school uh, location in East Germany uh, Brewers Motors have been uh, trained in Dresden for over 50 years. The Association of Private Brewers in Central Germany and the Association of the Promotion of uh, Young Professionals for Brewers and Maltsters can recommend all those interested contact us um, and a theoretical training in brewing malting on the Vocational School Center Nutrition in Dresden. Uh, that was a little bit of... Uh, Regarding that, and now over to another long text. I said that this is going to be a long text, uh, and we still have a lot of text left. Uh, the, pu the purity uh, law is this about. The purity law, or since beer has been brewed, there are also regulations on quality and the price of a beer. So 1156 from Augsburg, 1293 from Nuremberg. Uh, 1363 from Munich or uh, 1447 from Regensburg, their regulations have survived. In the second half of the 15th century and early 16th centuries, regional regulations for price setting and beer production then increased. This is also the case in Thuringia, where historian Michael Kirschslager discovered the Statua Taberna in February 1998. On the Runeberg in Weissensee, a late medieval pub rule and laws of beer brewing dating from around 1434. But, as is uh, so often the case, the first priority was power and money. He, uh, the landgrave Albert of Thuringia, probably asked the market master at Weissensee to prevent that someone, no matter whose fiefdom or tribute holder, would sell or serve beer within a mile outside of Weissensee if he had not brewed it for himself or bought it in Weissensee. But then it also means Article 12 uh, of the statute. I, uh, and here comes a text that I can't read because it's too old. Uh, because of the beer quality, uh, complaints uh, about bad beer had, had been uh, heard all over the country. The authorities themselves had essentially contributed to the beer adulteration with their beer price specifications to ensure profit. Despite rising raw material prices, many brewers reacted with poor beer quality. So all kinds of herbs, even drug-like plants or mushrooms, were added to the brew. To uh, achieve an appealing dark beer color, you even help with a little soot or ox blood. In order to effectively prevent these Grievances. Duke Georg of uh, uh, Bavaria Landshut uh, issued a decree in 1493, which was extended to the whole of Bavaria in 1516 and the English State, State Congress. Thus, on Georgitag, April 23, in 1516, the Dukes, uh, that time Wilhelm IV and his younger brother Ludwig V issued a new version of the Bavarian state order. The comprehensive legal act also included a reaction on the brewing beer. The dukes were not only cons uh, concerned with uh, keeping the beer clean, rather the bread supply of the population should be secured, for which the valuable wheat and rye should not only be reserved for the bakers and no longer for the brewers. The Bavarian purity law should also, be, uh, should also ensure that in the uh, future, only water, barley malt and hops may be used for the basic foodstuff beer. As far as ingredients are con um, concerned, at least this oldest food law is still valid nationwide uh, after more than 500 years. However, a certain time elapsed before the purity law was enforced and evidenced by an entry in the Senate, minutes after the in University of Ingolstadt on October 7, 1517, the university professor and city pastor in Münster, Dr. Eck, explained this year the wine is very expensive and the beer is inedible, so that nobody wants to drink it. 
you have to remedy the situation if you want to keep the university in force. The Senate immediately set up a five-member commission to discuss the seriousness of the situation with the city fathers. The brewers would have to stock up on better fabrics and larger quantities so that the students would not have to migrate due to lack of drink. But stop fill beer. The right to malt and brew uh, was originally reserved for the towns and the monasteries but was soon granted for the former Schwarzburg area uh, to the notable farms in the country, the Hammersmiths. Individual mills and in the 15th and 16th centuries most of the village communities. It has been handed down and there is no doubt that the beer was also brewed in Watzdorf at that time, first in the free boiling yard of the family named after him in Watzdorf and the second in the mill of the town which, among other things, entered an annual beer, uh, brewing tax around 1411 pig in uh, Blankenburg castle. It was only the uh, 17th century that the term Greifenstein was used to deliver and uh, that was uh, I guess probably the longest history uh, this far, not only history but some other information as well. Finally, I'm allowed to, to try this one soon, uh, which I need for my throat after uh, reading so much. Um, Braurecht Watzdorfer, die Erlebnisbrauerei Landbier, gebraut nach dem deutschen Reinheitsgebot. Heimische Braukunst im Seichen der Burg. Seit 1411, and there you see the beautiful landscape, the castle right there and the beautiful landscape um, what does it say on the back label label uh, ein mildes und malzbeton des landbier hergestellt unter verwendung von thüringer hochlandgerste aus kontrollierten anbau und feinste hopfensorten das deutsche reinheitsgebot ist uns anspruch und Verpflichtung. Alkohol Content 4.9 ABV, Watzdorfer Traditions- und Spezialitäten Brauerei GmbH Bad Blankenberg, Watzdorfer DE is the link to the Brewers website. I look to it in the description box below as I mentioned. Zutaten, Wasser, Gersen, Malz, Hopfen. Um, yep, that's what it says here on the bottle. Um, die Kleine zum Auf. Reisen is what it says here on the cap. I'll show you the cap here as well, of course. Uh, and on their website, it's possible to read the following on their on the uh, about their uh, Landbier. Uh, brewed with light malt, deliberate additions of hops from the varieties Mercury, Pearl, and Emerald give priority uh, to the malt flavors. Sensors, uh, color, golden yellow, and glossy. Uh, Odor emphasizes malty aromatic. That does, of course, sound interesting. Uh, one last look of the label of uh, Watzdorfer Landbier. And uh, see the coat of arms here also. The uh, uh, griffin and the castle. Uh, so let's open this one up. I don't need an opener because it's uh, this type of, of opening. Uh, way that you just remove this one like this and then um, let's pour it up Beautiful, with its uh, much foam, which is of course great. That's the way it should look, isn't it? Big foam and rises up above the edge. Um, something really important, build up a, a big foam head. Uh, that's something I always is mentioning and maintain the foam head all the way through. Uh, maintain it uh, while you drink. Keeps the right taste in the glass. You see the uh, probably the bubbles might not be that easy to see, but I see it anyway. It's just in the middle because of the, the shape of the glass. 
Um, Dan de beer, uh, quite clear, uh, easy to see through color, not that pale, a uh, little bit of more uh, darker yellow uh, in this case, foam it looks nice and it all looks real nice in my opinion. As I mentioned it's not easy to define um, Landbier as, um, as a beer style, so it's going to be interesting to, to taste it. Let's get the aroma. That's really, really fresh. Um, really hard to um, to uh, describe it grassy and really, really fresh. Not a hellas, not a pills, um, not probably not an export. It's it's simply just a Landbier. Um, so I understand why it's a land beer. Great high quality of the aroma. That's uh, something that I feel easily. Really fresh. So this is gonna be uh, really interesting to try this one. So what's the for land beer? Prost. Tastes beautiful, really great, really fresh. Uh, Thuringian Landbier is from uh, Wattstoffel. That's easy to feel. Uh, I've got, uh, yeah, fresh is the, the best word that I can mention for it. Um, it's really nice in its taste and really easy to, to feel that it's great high quality ingredients of it. Um, I really recommend you to check out their website. They do have other beers as well. Um, um, Burgbock, uh, Schwarzbier, um, Burgpils, for example. Um, this is a really nice one. Their, uh, their Landbier. This one is a recommendation. What's Stoffel? Landbier. Always interesting to try beers from uh, Thüringen in the heart of Germany. What a great this one is. Finally, I'm allowed to try this one. Really nice. I think this is for now. Much speaking and not that long tasting part, but that's how it is sometimes. Hope you like my reviews uh, anyway. Continue to follow my channel for more interesting beer reviews and uh, hope I see you again in um, next German beer review.